Hi everyone, I'm Elizabeth. I will be presenting today on selection tools for historical nonfiction, specifically for public libraries. People read historical nonfiction for a variety of reasons. Some people read about history because it gives them a better understanding of the world we live in today. Some people read about history purely for entertainment. Whatever the reason, public libraries are expected to have a thorough, well-rounded collection of historical nonfiction that serves a variety of users, from students to recreational readers. Of course, every public library has its own community of users with different areas of need, but most American public libraries have similar core historical nonfiction collections. In this presentation, I will be talking about selection tools that can be used by any public library to build its general collection of historical nonfiction. If you would like, please follow along with my handout, which includes annotations of the selection tools I will be talking about, grouped the way they are in my presentation. The first selection tools group I will talk about are awards and prizes for notable books. It is important to look at these award-winning books because they will be popular with patrons and they will expect to see them on the shelf. And you, as a librarian, can be confident that you are providing quality materials to patrons. So the first award I will talk about uh, is the National Book Award. Since 1950, the National Book Awards have recognized literary excellence. These awards are decided on by writers and publishers. So this is a writer's award um, decided on by other writers. They have categories for uh, fiction, nonfiction, and poetry. And in the category for nonfiction includes historical books. And many of them have received the National Book Award over the years. For example, a local favorite for Chicago, which many of you may have heard of, The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson was a finalist in 2003. And his book has the seal, the uh, National Book Award finalist. Uh, the second prize award I will talk about is the Pulitzer Prize Award. Uh, the Pulitzer Prizes are named after journalist Joseph Pulitzer. Not only recognize excellence in journalism, but in other literary arts, including books on American history. The awards are decided on by the Pulitzer Prize Board and announced by the president of Columbia University. The prestige that the Pulitzer Prize represents is highly sought after, encouraging excellence from American journalists and writers. For example, the popular historian David McCullough has received the Pulitzer Prize twice for his biographies of Harry Truman and John Adams. And the next award I will talk about is the RUSA Notable Books for Adults. Of course, RUSA stands for Reference and User Services Association. So the Reference and User Services Association, a division of the American Library Association, has put out a list of 25 notable books every year since 1944. The list is voted on by the Notable Books Council which is, appropriately enough, under the direction of the Collection Development and Evaluation section of RUSA. The goal of this list is to give the nation's readers a list of 25 very good, very readable, and at times very important fiction, nonfiction, and poetry books for the adult reader. So the prizes and awards I've just talked about are some of the most recognized awards that um, most library patrons uh, will know about. 
course, there are other, there are many other awards and prizes. So this is just um, a starting off point. The next group of selection tools I will talk about are review sources. Many patrons already look at some of these review sources and will expect to see these well-reviewed books on the shelf. Okay, so the first review source is the American Historical Review. This journal, published five times a year by the University of Chicago Press, is the official publication of the American Historical Association. Along with articles based on current historical scholarship, the journal publishes about 1,000 book reviews every year. Collection development librarians might want to take a look at this journal to find books on topics that are not currently represented very well at their libraries. So this journal, it's a bit scholarly in tone, but I think it could still be useful in the public library. Next review source is Booklist. Booklist is a print journal that has been published by the American Library Association for the past 100 years. And more recently, Booklist Online is its online counterpart. Booklist Online has a great reads feature which can be searched by category. Under adult nonfiction, you can find newly reviewed historical nonfiction books. Uh, they have starred reviews for books that have been especially well reviewed. And they also have a feature where you can search for similar titles and get suggestions. And the next review source is History Book Club. And History Book Club is a member-based online bookstore that specializes in history nonfiction. So instead of using, um, say, Amazon.com, a collection development librarian who wants to uh, focus on history can go to this online bookstore and um, every important new historical book, it's, it's already there and you don't have to search around for it. Um, there are helpful features such as new arrivals, top 100 bestsellers, and categories of historical eras to search by, such as American or ancient. There are also lengthy summaries provided for each book, usually uh, several paragraphs long. And some books are reviewed by actual historians. And the next review source is History Magazine. And History Magazine is published bi-monthly and contains articles uh, mostly about North American history. That's its focus. Uh, book reviews are included in every issue. Publishers submit books to be reviewed and the editorial board chooses books for inclusion based on merit and potential, potential interest to readers. These reviews could give a collection development librarian suggestions for books to include in the collection. Okay, and the next uh, review source is History, Review of New Books. Uh, this is a journal, it's published four times a year by Rutledge under Francis and Taylor, and it contains 30 to 40 reviews per issue. The journal highlights current historical scholarship from all geographical locations and time periods. So if you want a more global focus, you want to look at other um, types of history, not just um, well with the North American focus, this could be a, a useful source. Um, so though this journal, it might be a bit scholarly in tone for most public libraries, um, it can be useful for 
collection development librarians who want to expand their historical collections you know, beyond Western civilization. Okay, and the next source is um, Kirkus Reviews. And Kirkus Reviews is a print and online review source aimed at librarians and booksellers. Kirkus receives far in advance copies of books from publishers and reviews them two to three months before they are published, giving collection development librarians a heads up to which books will likely be on bestseller lists. Um, there's also the Kirkus Star, which indicates a book of remarkable merit. So if you just look for books that have the star, you can be sure that these have been very well reviewed. This is a very, very good book. Um, so books can be searched by category, including history. You can also look up specific uh, book titles or authors. And the next review source uh, is the New York Times Book Review. And New York Times Book Review is available in print and online. And um, you can also sign up to receive a weekly email update with new reviews. And that always comes on a Friday. Uh, the New York Times Book Review is a trusted source for finding good books to read and patrons will expect to see books from the New York Times bestseller list and um, at the end of the year there's always the annual uh, 100 notable books list and so patrons will also be expecting to see those books on their library shelves. And then the next source is Publishers Weekly and Publishers Weekly is an international book publishing journal that contains book news, reviews, and bestseller lists. This journal is aimed at those involved in the publishing world, including librarians. Publishers Weekly also has extensive coverage of different formats, including audiobooks and electronic books. So if you want to expand your collection beyond just regular print books, then Publishers Weekly could give you some good suggestions for maybe some historical uh, audiobooks or ebooks. Okay, and the last of the review sources um, is Video Librarian. And Video Librarian is available in print and is also an online database. And this source features reviews of newly, newly released special interest documentary and feature films. Reviews are written by staff, librarians, teachers, and film critics. Historical films and documentaries can be included in any public library's collection, and this source can help collection development librarians decide which titles to select. So for instance, if you want to include some historical titles in your collection. Um, you could go to Video Librarian and see uh, which titles would probably be the best ones to add. Okay. The last group of selection tools I will talk about are bibliographic in nature. They provide basic information about titles that should be considered for any basic public library collection. The first one is called Books in Print. Books in Print is a seven volume set that contains information about every single currently published book, which now it's about 1.7 million titles. Um, these titles are arranged by Library of Congress subject headings, which could be useful for collection development librarians looking for books in a particular historical subject. So if you look at your collection and see which areas are lacking, which ones you want to build up more, you can see which titles are available in a certain subject heading. Okay, so this hefty set 
It's a bit pricey at over $1,000, but it is still good to know about as a potential selection tool, especially depending on the size of the library. And the other selection tool for this category is uh, the Public Library Core Collection, Nonfiction. Um, and this is formally known as Public Library Catalog, and it's published by the H.W. Wilson Company. And it contains a list of nonfiction and reference books for adults arranged according to Dewey Decimal Classification. It is on its 13th edition with supplements supplied every year. The purpose of this selection tool is to provide public libraries with a basic or opening day collection. Therefore, this would be a great tool for a collection development librarian to use when building a historical collection, as well as just the entire nonfiction collection for a, a library. This is by no means an exhaustive list of selection tools available for historical nonfiction. There are many other awards and review sources available, especially online. But I hope I have provided all of you with some great places to start developing your collections. And I've provided links um, on my handout if you'd like to explore any of these uh, selection tools further. Well, thank you all for listening. Bye.